To install a device, you need to place it into the corresponding cabinet. Install boards, PM modules, and decoration panels for idle PM module slots, and route ground cables, DC power cables, network cables, and optical fibers. Finally, perform a check after the installation is complete. Before device installation, properly install the cabinet that meets the relevant requirements. You are advised to use the Huawei Standard Cabinet N68E. In this example, the device is installed in an N68E cabinet. Note that the side that is closest to the cable holes on the top of the N68E cabinet is the rear of the cabinet. Follow the instructions on the packing case to unpack the device and check the device appearance. Installing a device into a cabinet. Install guide rails for the cabinet. It is recommended that the distance between the guide rails and the bottom of the cabinet be 1U. By default, the N680 cabinet already has guide rails installed before delivery, meaning that you are not required to perform on-site guide rail installation. Use measuring tape to measure the screw installation holes on the panel with mounting ears and mark the corresponding positions on the tape. According to the marks, you can determine the installation position of floating nuts on the mounting bars residing on the front side of the cabinet. Use a floating nut installation tool or a flathead screwdriver to install floating nuts on the mounting bars. Move the device onto the guide rails and push it into the cabinet. It is recommended that multiple persons cooperate to improve device and personal safety. Use M6 panel screws to secure the device. Installing protection ground cables. Route one ground cable along the cable ladder. Connect one end of the cable to the terminal at the top of the cabinet and the other end to the ground bar of the equipment room. Then, install the other cable. Connect one end of the cable to the chassis and the other end to the ground terminal of the cabinet or the ground bar of the equipment room. Attach permanent labels 20 millimeters away from both ends of each ground cable. Installing power cables. Attach temporary labels to both ends of each power cable and route the power cables along the cable ladder to the device. Do not install power cables when the device is powered on. Remove the protective covers from the connection boxes of power modules and connect one end of each DC power cable to the corresponding terminal. After connecting power cables, reinstall the protective covers. Connect the other end to the PDF. Use cable ties to bundle cables every 150 millimeters upwards from the bottom and fasten the cables to the cable tray. Attach permanent labels 20 millimeters away from both ends of each power cable.
Installing PM Modules Take appropriate anti-static measures when you install PM Modules. If you do not need to install the maximum number of PM Modules, install PM Modules in the slots that have been connected to power cables based on mappings between PM Modules and PEM Modules. During installation, ensure that the PM Modules side with a top embossed seal faces upwards. Finally, install a decoration panel in each idle PM module slot. Installing boards. Take appropriate anti-static measures when you install boards. For example, wear ESD gloves or ESD wrist straps and ensure that the wrist strap is properly grounded. Open the packing case and take out the board. If you install the board by yourself, Place the board on the working bench before unpacking the board. The board must be placed on an anti-static bench. You can use the anti-static foam in the packing case as the bench. The board weighs about 10 kilograms. Exercise caution when moving the board and prevent the board from falling. It is recommended that two persons cooperate to unpack and take out the board. Do not place the board connector upside down on the floor after taking out the board. You are advised to grasp the panel with one hand and hold the bottom with the other hand, or grasp both sides of the board while carrying. When grasping both sides of the board, keep your hands out of the PCB to prevent damaging the components on it. We need to perform a simple check on the board before installing it. especially. Check whether the board connector is in good condition. Next, let's start board installation. First, remove the filler panel from the installation slot. Insert the board gently into the chassis along the guide rails. Pay attention to the cable tray so that it does not damage the side components of the board. Use the two ejector levers on the board to secure the board until the ejector levers are parallel with the board panel. Finally, use a Phillips screwdriver to tighten the two captive screws. Installing Network Cables Attach labels to both ends of each network cable. Route the network cables along the cable trough of the device and use a network cable tester to test the connectivity of the cables. After the test is complete, connect the cables to corresponding interfaces and use cable ties to fix the network cables onto the rack. Installing Optical Fibers Install the matching optical modules before you install optical fibers. Take appropriate anti-static measures during installation. To prevent contamination, cover spare optical interfaces using dustproof caps. Attach labels to both ends of each optical fiber. To facilitate subsequent cabling, split the optical fibers into different bundles according to the number of interfaces and bundle them with binding tape. Route optical fibers along the cable tray and remove dustproof caps from optical modules and optical fibers. Then, connect the optical fibers to corresponding optical modules according to relevant label information. Bundle optical fibers with links of binding tape applied in an interval of about 150 millimeters. Use cable ties to secure the optical fibers to the cable tray. 
Connect the other end of each optical fiber to an ODF. Checking the installation. Check that the positive and negative poles of the power cables are correctly connected for the device and equipment room. Otherwise, the device fails to be powered on. After the installation is complete, check that all captive screws are fastened and all the idle slots have filler panels inserted. Check that cables are properly bundled and labels are properly attached. Use diagonal pliers to trim off the excess of cable ties without remaining rough edges. Plastic formal labels must be attached to power cables and damaged network cables or fiber labels must be replaced. This facilitates future maintenance.